next question I have for you, David, yeah. is from Ian B. Mm -hmm. And they ask why you forego single pilot fighters in your Honor Harrington series. Hmm. I don't. That's what sting ships are. That's really, in a lot of ways, what the, uh, the assault shuttles are. Uh, if you look at them, I mean, they're, they're like two-man fighters. So because they're big, they have to be. Right. Because you got to put a fusion plant in them and stuff like that. But there's really no role for a single ship fighter in the universe. The biggest problem is that if you look at, let's take the example of uh, uh, a, uh, a nuclear-powered carrier today, like the Gerald Ford or the Nimitz or whatever, um, and an F-18. Okay, mm -hmm. they they move in different media. Okay, one of them moves in the water, one of them moves through the air. One of them, the absolute maximum speed you're going to be able to get out of any maximum displacement hull, which is what you need to build a carrier, is going to be maybe 35, 36 knots. You're just at a point where you can't put enough water, power into the water to move a ship the size of the Gerald Ford much faster than that. Um, okay, well, here is the F-18 that cruises at 500 knots and is capable of like 1,800. Okay, so... You're two totally different vehicles. Mm -hmm. They're in different maneuver profiles. Okay, the 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 fighter can carry uh, uh, weapons that can take out um, a Nimitz. Maybe if they're really really lucky, and, and you know, if they're using nukes, that's another thing. But you know, you could hit a Nimitz with a fair number of tomahawks, probably, for example much less harpoons or exocet before you had, mm -hmm. you could mission kill the ship. Right. But actually sinking her would be like, I oh, don't know, we're going to be here a while. Okay. Um, I just finished watching, God help us, Liam Neeson in Battleship the other day with the Missouri and the mothership dueling it out at like 50 feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> bring back the battleship. But anyway, um, in the honor verse, the ships move in the same medium, okay? The maximum speed at which they can move is very similar, okay? And you can't put four meters of armor onto an F-16. Plus, you couldn't build an F-16 with a power plant that allowed it to operate at any range from the, from the, 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 the fleet, mm -hmm. okay? You can't launch an over-the-horizon strike with fighter craft in in the honorverse, because if they're over the horizon from the ship, that means they're probably on the other side of the hyper limit, which means that by the time your guys get close enough to the problem, they're going to say bye, and there's going to be your guys with well, hyper generators sort of spawning around in space, saying they were here a minute ago. All right, so it's really wrong to think of the light attack craft as fighters even though they aren't hyper capable, mm -hmm. what they really are is a fast missile boat. Okay, something more like, um, oh, something more like the, 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 the fight, fast light craft uh, armed with the Gabriel missile by the Israelis or the sticks by, by the Russians. Okay. okay. Uh, they've got a heavy throw weight. Uh, they are fast, but they're fast to accelerate not necessarily faster at speed than their target. Um, they have um, decent electronic suites in the case of the, of the Mantis because of where the Manticorns are with stealth and FTL comms and everything else. They have really good uh, suites. Um, you could perhaps argue that um, a Shrike uh, is closer in concept almost to what the littoral combat ship is supposed to be in the U.S. Navy today, but where they're still having some problems getting it there. Uh, it has a grazer that can kill a battle cruiser if it can get into range mm -hmm. for the shot. It has a magazine load of missiles that it can do rude stuff with. Uh, but it's not a fighter, okay? It's a light attack craft. Um... And they're down to crews of like eight already, which if you think about it, for a 32,000, 42,000 ton vessel, that's not a lot of people. Right. Um, and they have systems that they have to, to, to manage 
that your typical fighter pilot in a single fighter aircraft today would not have to go anywhere near. Okay, I mean, he's going to take off. He's going to be in the air for a couple of hours, uh, probably only a couple of hours, even if he tanks midair, whereas uh, a Shrike is likely to be deployed almost indefinitely, at least for, you know, up to up to two, three months at a time if it has to be. Okay. So you're, you're talking a different set of, of constraints. And I try, when I integrate something into one of my books, to do it in a way that makes logical sense within the existing hierarchy of systems and hardware available to the sides introducing them. Mm -hmm. um, in the Starfire books, we have like one and two men, well, two and three man fighters. The three man fighters are like the command fighters and so forth. Uh, in the Apocalypse Troll, we have the fighters. But in both of those cases, the fighter drives are different from the starship drives. And therefore, you do have uh, a, a qualitative difference in the, in the speeds that they can maintain and in the maneuverability that they can maintain. Okay. Um, that isn't the case in the Honorverse because of the way I set up the basic tech constraints about how you get from here to there in terms of, of uh, deep space movement. There's no way that you could put reaction thrusters onto anything in the Honorverse that could come close to what you can do with impellers and an inertial compensator, for example. Well, inertial compensator is a certain size, okay? Mm -hmm. Impeller nodes are a certain size, even if you make them as small as you can. 